Hey guys, M2 Collect here with another figure review. Next up is the Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection Deluxe Wave 4, I think it is. This is the Mighty Morphin Mighty Minotaur. Um, and this is actually a really cool figure. I actually really like this one a lot. This might be probably the best uh, monster figure that is out in the Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection line. Um... It's not, I wouldn't say it's the best villain figure, but I think this is definitely going to be the best monster out of them. Snizzard was cool. Pumpkin Rapper was cool. King Sphinx was cool. Uh, Pudgy Pig was cool. Uh, is that all of them? Perantis Head is another one. Uh, they're all pretty cool, but this Mighty Minotaur is awesome. I, I would go as far as to say he is awesome. His little energy, like lightning effect kind of fell off of his little horn. Uh, over here, but yeah, this this figure is a lot of fun. The accessories are cool. He comes with one extra set of hands. He's got a mace. He's got this big ass shield. And here's the best part. And I wish this would have happened for all of the monsters. Like this was such a damn good idea. And it comes so late in the game that Deluxe Mighty Morphin. This might be it for Deluxe. I don't know if there's going to be any other Lightning Collection Deluxe figures until it comes back after the pause. Now, yes, the Lightning Collection is going hiatus. Power Ranger toys are going hi on hiatus. The production for the show is finished in New Zealand. They're not going back. Cosmic Fury is the last season in the iteration of Power Rangers as we know it. Hasbro is fully rebooting the brand. Until that reboot gets done, after Cosmic Fury, there's going to be a long pause of nothing that goes the same with toys. I hear there may, there may be special one-off releases that may still happen, but there will not be any toys, which does include Power Rangers Lightning Collection. When the show gets rebooted and is off the ground, that's when we will see toys return. That's when we will see Power Rangers Lightning Collection return. That's not a rumor, folks. I heard that directly from Emily, who works with Hasbro on the Power Rangers team, the G.I. Joe team, the Dungeons & Dragons team, all of that. She works in marketing. She read the official statements to me at the Hasbro breakfast at San Diego Comic Cons. That is fact. 100% that is what's happening. We will see a pause where we won't see any Power Rangers toys until the reboot gets off the ground, then we will see a return to the toys, including Power Rangers Lightning Collection. It's coming back. I also partied. I didn't really party. Well, we are at a party after one of the nights of San Diego Comic-Con. But John Warden was there. I talked to him about it as well. He assured me it's not going away completely. It will be on a pause. will return. But anyway, back to what I was saying was the really cool thing. We get the damn little clay model... Of the Mighty Minotaur. This is what Finster would use to make the monsters in his monster making machine. Uh, why wouldn't we have gotten one of these for every single monster? Like how freaking cool is that? Like if, if anything, this figure maybe you should have come with one for all of the other monsters so we would have one. Because this is just the really the coolest thing. Um, the figure is awesome, but for whatever reason, I just love this tiny little mini accessory almost the most out of the whole thing. Um, it is really cool. But anyway. Enough of that. I'm rambling on. I want to get to the awesome figure that is the Mighty Minotaur. Uh, but looking at the package, standard deluxe windowless packaging that we have seen with the artwork of Mighty uh, Minotaur there. The 3D render of the figure there. We get that same artwork on the side. Looking at the back of the package again, we see all the loadout of everything. We have the shield, the mace, the lightning effect, the extra hands, and the little clay uh, model of Mighty Minotaur. The cool thing about Mighty Minotaur, we also have Snizzers. Those were the returning uh, villains for the 30th anniversary once a ranger um netflix special which is pretty cool we don't get the robotic versions of them uh but we have those uh monsters in there which is pretty cool so let's get this box out of the way and let's get in for the closer look at the mighty minotaur because again this is a really really good figure hasbro did an awesome job on this it is fully pinless and everything which is cool because even like the snizzard uh well the Snid snizzard had single jointed elbows and single jointed knees that's why he was pinless uh, but none of the other monsters were pinless, right? This guy is, which is really cool. So let's get into it. Okay, so already closed up look at the Mighty Minotaur head sculpt. And that looks really good. Dark brown for his skin tone. Bright metallic green eyes uh, there. There is a little bit of shading in there. Some dark browns in there, which is nice. He's got a black nose there. The fur, which is like this brownish, light brown, grayish color, um, which looks really good. It's very texturized. 
uh, very detailed in there in the paint and everything like that. Skin, brown tone skin, uh, kind of throughout the figure, but we get that fur kind of going out. Uh, here on the legs, we do get a little bit of wash in there, which is nice. Um, here on like his skirt piece, this is soft rubber, but you can see they added in some silver paint in there for some weathering. Same thing on these gauntlet pieces here. These spikes are actually pretty pokey, so you don't want to like grab it by the arms. Um, so you want to be careful there, but nice silver paint that's added in there um, and everything. Nice, nice, you know, details. Uh, the lightning energy effect there that goes around his horns. Um, as you can see, it kind of loops in there and then kind of loops right into that little hole, but then it wraps around there. Uh, just done in this like turquoise-ish green color, which is cool. Uh, looking at the back of the figure, we don't get any of that silver paint in there at all. Uh, but it looks like there is some of that wash kind of throughout the fur, which is a nice touch. And you can see we got all the points of articulation that we love. Uh, looking at the hooved feet, and those look pretty good there. Uh, as well. Uh, here we have his mace and this is just done in a grayish color. The band right here for the handle is just done this like light brownish color. Um, that's pretty good. It is pretty spiky. Those are not like super soft and pliable so you don't want to grab it and squeeze. That's gonna hurt. So careful, careful there. The shield however does have some spikes and horns growing on there and we do get some of that silver paint going on. This is what the inside of it looks so he can easily hold on to it with his uh, left hand or I guess you could probably do it with his right hand as well um, so just adds up on that but there we go we get some cuts in there some scrapes to make it look weathered with that silver paint that looks really good uh, there so yeah mighty minotaur looking pretty awesome let's go ahead and check out his articulation Okay, so Mighty Minotaur, his head is on a dumbbell joint. This fur piece right here around the collar is just like a floating piece. Like if I pop the head off, as you can see how it works on there, it's just this like floating uh, little fur piece. But it helps, you know, cover that gap of this big ass uh, ball peg that just sticks out. So the head just kind of goes on there. Uh, so you are a aware. I'm going to pop that on there so the head can get all kinds of good motion in there. But he's not going to be able to look down, unfortunately, looking up. Um, he, yeah, he can look up quite a bit, actually. Man, why can't we really... Well, you can get him to look down that much there. Uh, full rotation, of course, and you kind of get some pivot and things going on because it is on that dumbbell joint. Uh, so you know. The arm can only go out this far. Unfortunately, the, the like tuft fur kind of gets in the way, hits that shoulder piece, so it'll only get that much, so not a full T-pose or anything like that. Full rotation in that arm. Uh, the butterfly joint, so you can get that arm to go back. Coming forward, however, you're not going to get a whole lot in terms of cross body. It's really just to be able to get that arm to go back. Got the upper bicep swivel in there. Double jointed pinless elbow which is awesome so getting the bend get both of those pieces working you get that much bend there at the elbow which is awesome wrist swivel and the hinge the open uh grip hands have a vertical hinge on there because they're going to wield the the mace or hold the shield so that is great uh the fist that goes to the right hand has a standard horizontal hinge and then the open hand for the left has a standard horizontal hinge as uh well so just a heads up on that we do get the diaphragm cut on the mighty minotaur so he could tilt to his left only so much to be honest it's not a whole lot tilt to his right a little bit again not a huge amount going there uh, going back on it by itself, not a whole lot. Coming forward by itself, not a whole lot. You do get a swivel at that diaphragm cut, but we do get the inverted abs. So going all the way back on the Mighty Minotaur, go back that much. Coming forward, he can lean forward that much there, which is pretty good. And you can hear kind of the ratcheting in there. Legs go out that far apart. You can do the full splits, which is awesome. Um, I keep forgetting that this guy has a tail. It's on a ball joint kind of in there. So it can kind of just move around a little bit. Not really a hinge, so you can't really hinge it on out. It just kind of goes in the back and can kind of wave around there. And that's a terrible visual that I just gave you guys. Uh, he can kick forward that far. There, the leg goes back actually quite a bit. You got an upper thigh cut in there, a double jointed pinless knee. So you get that much bend there at the knee. Unfortunately, the lower part 
of that hinge is not the color uh, of the fur, so that kind of sticks out there. But that's a solid bend for such a thick ass leg. Uh, no cat, uh, boot swivel. There is an ankle swivel in there though. That ankle ball does have its own swivel, so you could swivel the foot. Uh, you can hinge down only a little bit. The fur really extends out um, quite far in the back, so you're not gonna get that foot to hinge down any more than that. Tiny bit up, but you do get ankle pivot and peg holes at the bottom of the feet with the peg hole being closer to the hooves, not the toes. Um, so pretty good articulation for such a beast of a monster. But yeah, this guy is just really damn awesome. Okay, in terms of size comparison, Snizzard is... The problem with Snizzard is I can't get him further back into frame because he's got this long-ass tail. But as you can see, in terms of height, Minotaur is quite larger uh, than Snizzard. And that's not just, you know, his head... Well, the top of the Snizzard's crown is almost at the top of his head. But then you got the horns of the mighty Minotaur, which makes him even more taller. Uh, but, you know, height-wise, size-wise, they're about the same. Weight-wise, they are about the same. Okay, and without pulling out every one of my Power Rangers figures, here we have the Mighty Morphin uh, Blue Ranger and Yellow Ranger for side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see with the Male Ranger um, and the Female uh, Ranger what the size difference is there. And Mighty Minotaur is massive, and we've just debated and discussed the scale of the monsters, whether they should have been a 7-inch scale or the 6-inch scale like the Rangers are. Um, Hasbro made the decision to give us these beast figures in a 7-inch scale. I'm not too mad at it, however, it is not right when you compare them to the Rangers and like the Putty and all of that. It's just kind of one of those things that we kind of have to live with because we get a bigger figure, which in turn can be better. And I would say in these cases, they are. But again, it would be nice if they actually scaled well. Um, so here you can see next to Rita Repulsa, he is quite, uh, quite large but still an awesome figure. Uh, I'm trying to keep the videos short for you guys on these Power Rangers videos. I don't get a ton of views, but I like to go over them when they're just so damn cool and so awesome to have and when I am excited. Mighty Minotaur, I wasn't that excited. I've seen pictures, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to warm up to it. Opened the box, immediately fell in love. It is awesome. So I hope you guys picked it up. Um, I'll have a link in the video description below. I got mine from Amazon. I think Big Bad Toy Store may have already gotten it, but I think it is one that is definitely worth picking up. The new Deluxe Rita Repulsa is out in some areas. I think Big Bad Toy Store may have had that as well. I do not yet have that figure. My Amazon order has not updated to arrive any earlier or anything like that. Um, so we'll see how that Rita is. I think she is very similar to this one. But the Mighty Minotaur is by far the best monster figure that Hasbro has given us in the Lightning Collection line. But you guys let me know down in the comments below what are your thoughts on that. Do you agree? Do you think he um, he's like mediocre at best or there's other better monsters and things like that? Honestly, I don't really remember him from the show at all, but... It's an awesome figure. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit that join button to become a channel member and be a part of the MCU Collective. Your support is much appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching.